Hey folks, Reloading Bench back with you once again. It's been a little while. I had a recent request to talk about the track system I had installed on my bench along with a couple of other requests, so I thought I'd do some videos on those. So a few years ago, actually many years ago when I was looking at other benches and uh, before some of the modular stuff from folks like inline fabrication or some of the ultra mounts or heavy mounts that uh, some of the press manufacturers like a Dillon were putting out or are now putting out. Um, a lot of folks would just sink holes into their benches and uh, limit the mobility of space or mobility of a particular uh, device or piece of equipment. Uh, and then obviously the challenge of maximizing your space on the bench. So. Uh, after a few years, I decided, uh, after seeing a few other videos and what people have done uh, in different hobbies, uh, especially woodworking, I decided to install a track system uh, on the bench. And this is essentially, uh, I want to say it's roughly half inch. Three quarter inch wide by about half inch deep. And what I did was... Uh, marked off what I thought uh, I would want in terms of uh, the area. So the goal is the length of the bench, the width of the bench. And uh, I've got two tracks. Uh, and I did that for larger pieces of equipment as well as moving smaller pieces of equipment to either track. And uh, after I put the track in, I decided uh, simply because when you have a bare track like this, It catches everything. So you've got a lip, and I'll uh, I'll do a close up uh, in a few minutes off tripod so you can see what I did. It's the hopefully not too shaky freeform view of the track, brass screws, mm, every six inches or so, seven, eight inches. There you can see the seam. So these were. 24 inch pieces bench in terms of uh, evenness and the difference uh, by putting that quarter inch uh, piece of pine in so that uh, nothing spills and is caught in there uh, it makes a world of difference so that when you actually need the the track it's there it's solid um, I tried to make the cut as uh, close as possible so you don't see large gaps between the sides of the uh, frames on the track on the t-track it's also called t-slot I've seen in other places and uh, if you've watched any of my previous videos you know I have a thing for red so I was specifically looking for anodized red t-track or t-slot so uh, put it in, did the routing, um, took my time with that because uh, I didn't want to mess up uh, my bench. And uh, once I had it routed, uh, then I was able to tap this in. So there's pressure holding it in, but uh, I also glued, tapped it in, and then sunk and countersunk the, uh, the brass screws, which I think are half-inch screws, so that uh, this isn't going anywhere. You're not going to see... Um, this yank up, but I also don't put a press on here either. So I prefer to use uh, inline fabrications um, mounts, which I'll do another video on those uh, from a generic perspective of uh, press mounts. So this has relegated my bench to uh, smaller type of objects or devices or whatever, such as you know a, a powder drop. Uh, and I think I showed this a while back too. Uh, so it's essentially just a quarter inch bolt and I usually do some type of mount. Um, this was rusting away and I decided to do a truck bed coating so it uh, revitalized it. But uh, you're essentially either going to take the bolt off and slide it in from the open end or not take the bolt off and be lazy about it. Let's see if I can get it in. 
so that um, got a couple ways to mount it. Um, take the bolt off and just do the bolt alone or depending on how small the device and the mount is, slide it in and then uh, it's just a pressure. And that's not going anywhere. I mean that's, that's I can shake the bench, but that's pretty solid. Uh, and, and what it allows for me is uh, moving things around. Say I'm working on uh, a new load or a different powder and I wanted to try something out. Um, it gives me the flexibility of moving things around, sitting in comfort and having something right in front of me instead of having to be maybe over at one of the edges where the presses are mounted. So um, great degree of flexibility, movement, positioning, whatever I want to do, get it out of the way, keep it dead center for where I'm at. And it's a, as you can see, it's a snug fit. So um, you don't see a whole lot of folks doing it. Um, I think there's a couple of folks that have done um, T-track, T-slots, and some of uh, some of the pictures I've seen in different forums. But uh, I like it. It's, uh, it's extremely helpful for uh, different things I'm doing, whether that's bench priming, working a powder load, um, playing with a, uh, um, a vise uh, when I'm doing some smithing. So it's, uh, it's worked out quite well. But uh, they're online. I think I got the tracks, I want to say through Amazon. I honestly can't remember. It's been uh, quite a while. And uh, they aren't that expensive. They were maybe I think 12, 12 or 15 dollars for uh, I think it came in a set of two and these were two by either 24 inches or 12, 24 or 36 and uh, and then I just cut them down on the edges if they were uh, too long but uh, again Great degree of flexibility. They're in there very solid, and they've worked out pretty well for me. So that's it for now, and I'll follow up pretty soon with a uh, video or two on uh, different types of press mounts.